Hello, welcome back. So in this session, we are going to look into authentications using token. We are going to look into an API which requires authentication, token authentication for our API server. I am Kumar and welcome to my channel on tech and tutorials. So first let me show you our API. So this is the get users API, get all users in the system and the API endpoint is API slash users. Okay, there is another one API for getting a specific ID, but we are going to use this one users to get all the users and this requires the authentication of the token. So as access token. So before calling this API, we are supposed to call the login API and get the token. And in this API, we are supposed to pass in this token in our headers of our request. Okay. And yeah, this is a simple response. I, well, this simple response is for a single uh, user, but uh, we will see that uh, what we get. And there is no body for this API. So actually, let me start this case server here itself. Now, okay. let's start by creating first our test function and let me create a test module first so test underscore let me actually name it as auth right? this is the linear approach we will put everything getting the token and all those stuff in a single test i'll show you how to do this so i'll name it as test underscore auth underscore demo here what we will need is we will actually our old uh, utils so from the file utils we will use get json from file we are going to get uh, this login apis request body from a file okay and we don't have that yet login json body we will create that okay so let's uh, finish this import thing first okay and from utils dot api utils we will need the post uh, api data and then we will need the get api data post is for our login and get is for our get users we are going to test the get users api and from the utils dot config parser we will need the get uh, flask app base url actually next thing we can do is we can create our test data the login request body let us create that so file and let us actually login valid dot json okay so this is an user which is already available in our system and this is the user with id 1 and i prefer to not delete this user always and use it in our test so it will be always available just consider this as application which is having a super user which cannot be deleted so we'll use this user which will be actually by default available in the system okay so this is our login valid dot json we have created our json file well so let me show you the api utils module which will do the api calls for our test so in here we have defined all our api calls and we will be keep on updating this module api utils dot pi okay and this module will define all the functions wherein we will be doing all the api calls and sending the response out for example this is the get api data and this one's uh, actually doing the api calls and it will just send the response out of this function so whenever a our test function calls this get api data it's going to give a response the response from the api from this function okay so that you have all your api calls in this same module well this is about how you design your test framework in a modular way the work is actually distributed by the functionality of each module here all the api calls are from a different module or function and each of our component or each of our modules of the whole framework is having a single and well defined responsibility doing that you will have less code to do in your test function and this will of course save us from code duplications in our test function otherwise you would need to do the same api call request.get request.post in each of your test functions okay the other one is about this config parser module this one reads from our configuration file and gives the required config params that our test actually needs you can see we are importing a config parser from the python's modules and then we are also using the path lib to traverse to the config folder so this is our config folder where we will keep all our configuration files and we use this path lib module to traverse to this folder and get to the config file okay so our config parser we are initializing the config parser and then we are going to the config file of the flask app qa.ini in this case and then it is reading it and we will have separate functions which will give each of the config from this config parser module okay again here this module or component of our framework will have a single and well-defined responsibility of reading and giving configs only okay now if you we try to run this this i put in some print statement here if i try to run this 
you can see here the API URL for our Flask app is printed in here. Okay, and we are calling this get Flask app base URL. Okay, and we are building the URL from in this module by taking in inputs from the QA.ini file. Okay, this is how we read our config files which are in INI format. And then in our test function, we are using this to get to the URL or any other things which you need for your test environment. Okay, next thing actually start writing our test. Here we need to call this login JSON file name and login valid dot JSON. Okay, now base URI is get plus app stuff and the login URL path is going to be login. So these are the things which uh, we need to define beforehand. Let me actually put a comment here, demo test with token. Okay, this is just a demo and let's start writing our test test get users demo okay then let us actually start writing okay so first thing what we need to do is first login with an existing user to the system so now if if i want to test our get users we need to log in and get the token first correct so we have to define this base URI plus login url path okay this is our login url so if you want you can you can name it properly login url okay now in the payload uh, which is the re our request body we will do get json from file and login json file right login json file is what we need to provide and then in the response we will do a post api data and our login url and our payload so this completes our login request to our server okay so actually let Actually, do one print here. So response response dot JSON. Okay. So let us actually run this and see that this user is able to log into the system. I should get, see some output here from the response body. So run pytest and let us see that. So our request body. This was our request body which went into the our request and then this is our response. So our response is a message. The email ID logged in and status two hundred and token we got. We got the token. So it looks like our code is fine. It is able to get the token from the server side. Okay. Now we have to extract. Okay. We have to extract this token from this response and put it in the header of our get users API. That's what we need to do. So how we can get is this is a dict, right? So we can actually provide these square braces and we can put a token. So this is going to print our token. Basically, we can actually just token equals to and we actually will take this whole thing. So this is going to give us our token. We put it in a variable token here. Now we have our token already from our login API call. Next is we need to we need to call the get API data for our uh, users API. Correct. Users URL is base URI plus well, we need to define our users URL path. So it is users. So base plus users URL path will give us the full URL for our users API. And in the headers part, we are supposed to send this token. Okay. So here curly braces and then should be X access token. Okay. And we have to provide the token which we got from our login API. So we are providing the header with this SXS token. Okay. Now can actually do the request correct response response of users okay so we can do a get api data url and we will put users url and our headers okay so this is the headers which will go to our get api data we will look into the utils function of the get api data if we go to our get api data and if you see op header is equals to none the headers which we are passing here will be considered if it is there the header which we pass from our test function will be merged to this application JSON header in this utils function. In case if you want send only the header from the test function, you will need write a new utils function. What we can do is we can either write another function or we can update this utils function get API data to handle that condition also. Okay. So for now I will go ahead. If you need to send it for any request, you can actually 
pass in the header multiple headers from your test function itself so that you don't need to update your utils function because utils function is actually used by other tests also other people might be using it if you are working in a team so updating this uh, utils function is little risky you have to consider all the other tests it should not break all your other tests and if there are many tests it will be problematic for you so either you can write a new function or you have to handle that within this function in that case now let us actually do this request but let me actually first print uh, something here so print resp underscore users dot json okay so now i have not yet done any assert i'm just printing it okay just to see that it is able to call and try to show you the full flow so now let us do the request for this i mean let us run this test now run pytest and let me make this a little bit bigger okay so this was our request for our login which you can see here login and there was one test only i mean it's only one test so it got passed anyway so 100 percent. and this was our request for our login which got the response and we got the token okay i was trying to print the token in our if i scroll here here if you see here the print response.json token this is that token which i am printing and then this token is being taken to the header part in our request so this is our subsequent request here users and in the request header you can see the token as access token it went and this is that one okay and then in the response this is the response header for this all these print messages are coming from our utils get api data okay and this is our final print statement in our test function this is these are all the get users apis response which we are getting okay so we are able to follow the full thing and we were able to get the get users api data in the response so now coming into our test function here we were able to do this login and we were able to get to the get users api data and we if we put some assert statements for this get users we will be testing our get users api here now the problem with this approach is you when you have to write more tests for your get users api there will be a lot of other tests for your get users api right you want to test with payloads different request headers and all and even in the payload you will be having multiple different type of tests so you need to duplicate all this code every time in each of your test so you have to organize this using pytest fixtures in your test framework you can use fixtures and do that very easily maybe we can explain that in another session how to organize it in a better way and how to put all this login and all in a fixture so that you don't need to do it every time we'll see that for now i have shown you how to do authentication with tokens in your test api test so that's all in this session thank you and consider liking and subscribe if this has actually helped you thank you so much